Hello, and welcome to this tutorial and demonstrations on RentWorks by Bluebird Auto Rental Systems. You are going to hear from several of our senior staff members during these sessions. I am Angela Margolet, President of Bluebird Auto Rental Systems, and I will present the opening and closing sessions. This will help your system administrator set up your database. This tutorial is intended for rental agents at the front counter. RentWorks is a true multi-user Windows software using a Progress ODBC database. Each user has a unique login and password. The security level and group assigned to each user determine which menu and programs can be viewed. Also tied to the login is the language to be used and for which location reports can be run. RentWorks version 4 sports the familiar Outlook format. When you first log in, the dashboard appears. There are three tabs, Performance, which includes Reservations Build and Fleet Statistics. The Snapshot tab will show you for your chosen period of time the reservations, contracts open, contracts closed, and walk-ups. And the Source of Business will show you your various sources of business that you have defined and the revenue they have brought you. The settings for each of these tabs are determined by you. You can select, again, the range of time as well as the location. On the left of the main menu is an expandable screen with the major categories including favorites, the dashboard, fleet, marketing, counter, inquiries, and reports. Once you select an item in this area, folders will appear in the upper left. By clicking on the plus sign, you can expand that section. To add items to the Favorites folder, simply click and right click. As you open additional programs, you will see the program appear in the screen with a different colored tab. Therefore, you can run multiple programs at one time. Hi, this is Robert Rodriguez, and we're going to be talking about creating a new reservation in the new version 4 software. To do so, on the left side of the screen, you press your counter menu, Above that, you'll see a list of options of which you'll select Reservations. Upon selecting that option, the screen comes up that allows you to view all reservations that exist in the system or to create a new reservation by clicking the New button at the top left. Before, most of the information that you'll need to create a reservation exists on one screen. At the top, we have listed our reservation number and the status. Below that, we pick the location and the date and time that the person will be picking up the vehicle simply by selecting the drop-down box. Once you select your date and time, if you know how long the person will be keeping the vehicle, you simply type the number of days here and the computer will calculate the return date and time. After that, you select the type of vehicle that the person wishes to rent by pressing search, the computer will tell you your availability. In this case, we're looking for a mid-sized vehicle. It shows us that we have two available. We also have a compact, a sport, and three luxury vehicles available at the same time. So should you want to upsell or change the reservation to a different size vehicle, you know what's available to you. Once you've settled on the type of vehicle, below that the system will list the rates that are available at this time. 
simply double click on the rate that you wish to give to the customer. It will add that to the list of estimated charges on the right side of the screen and allow you to move on. While it's rare that you would select coverages at the time of reservation, the system does allow you to do so simply by clicking the drop down arrows here. If you have multiple levels of coverage, you can select those lists here as well. Finally, if this is a repeat renter or someone who has rented from you at any point in the past, on the top right hand corner, simply click the binoculars next to phone number, VIP number, or last name. Type in the first few letters of their last name and perform a search. The system will look through its entire database to find a match, either by first name or by last name, or any combination thereof. Double click on the name that you would like to use. You will be prompted if you wish to apply the renter preferences to the rental. That would include types of coverage, size of vehicle. At this point, your reservation is complete. You do have additional options such as adding a deposit at the bottom of the screen. You can edit the driver's information should you need to add additional drivers at this point or add additional information on the existing driver or if you wish to view all of your charges and payments, you can go there as well to show each individual charge and the breakdown of the total estimated charges. When you are done, you simply press the Finish button at the top of the screen. The system will prompt you to print a reservation or not. And you are done. That reservation is now in the system and can be viewed simply by doing a search. Hi, in this segment, we're going to be talking about the Res Planner. To access this, on the left side, you click the menu option called Counter. And then at the top, we simply click Res Planner. The purpose of this is to give you a graphical view of your reservations and your fleet at any given time. At the top of the screen, you select a location, a vehicle class, and a date range, then simply press search, and the system will automatically display all of the vehicles within that class range, all of the transactions for those vehicles, as well as any unassigned reservations. Items that you see here in red are contracts that are overdue. Items that you see in purple are current contracts. Items that you see in gray are out of service or unavailable vehicles. And finally, items in green are reservations that have not yet been assigned to a vehicle. It is not mandatory to assign a reservation to a vehicle, but in some cases you may wish to do so. Done is simply by clicking the reservation at the top of the screen and dragging it to the vehicle that you wish to assign it to. It's that simple. If you wish to view more information on a reservation, simply hover your cursor above the res and it will give you the summary info such as the res number, the name, date out and in, and the type of vehicle that it's been assigned to. If you wish to see detail, simply double click the reservation and the system will automatically take you into the reservation that was made. Back to the res planner, you can also see additional information on your vehicles. Again, simply hover over the unit, and in the top right-hand corner, we'll show you the information on the vehicle, the year, make, model, the location, and the number of kilometers or miles that are on the vehicle. By grabbing this bar here and sliding it to the right, you can also see information in regards to the odometer, location, year, make, and model. This assures that you're assigning the right reservation to the right vehicle. Finally, when you're done, you simply select Assign Vehicles at the top. That will save all the changes that you've made. And press the X in the top right-hand corner to exit the screen. Are you sure you wish to save changes? Yes. When we access Res Planner again, the assignments that we made are still there. Another feature of Res Planner is that you can look up to a year in advance to see what your vehicles will be doing or what your reservations will be like at that time. 
You can also choose to view your reservations by hours, days, or weeks. The default is days, and this is the same view as we've seen earlier. By changing it to hours, it will then give you a breakdown by each hour of the day. When you are finally finished, simply press the X in the top right hand corner. Hello, my name is Sue Gibbons, and I am going to show you how to open, close, and modify contracts. We are going to click on the counter file and then click on the contract processing folder. To rent a vehicle, we are going to click on checkout. We are going to use a reservation that I have already set up. I am entering the name, Steve Miller, and I can enter one or even no characters. And then I'll click on the search button. Once the name I want appears, I am going to double click on it, which will take us to the summary tab. Across the right top of the screen, we have the pickup information, which gives us the location date and time out, number of days, location due, and date and time due. In the top right hand corner, we have the renter information. If this was a walk-up customer who had rented from you before, you can click on the binoculars and select the customer record. Beneath the pickup information, we have the vehicle information. We are going to click on the binoculars next to the unit number. If you want to select a vehicle with one or more options, simply highlight them. All vehicles who meet your criteria will appear in blue. To select a vehicle, simply double click. To pull the vehicle information, you can attach a company, enter a rate plan, and indicate if it's a rollover, month-to-month -month contract. In the vehicle information field, we have the rate code box. As you can see, under the rate code box, it shows us the rate details for this contract. If we wanted to change the rate, we can click on the binoculars next to the rate code box and select a different rate. Once we double click on the new rate, the information populates over to the charge summary field, which is located to the right of the screen. Next, we have the fields for up to four coverages, such as CDW, PAC, PEC, and SLI. By clicking on the drop box next to the CDW field, I can select the CDW package that I wish to use. Once I select a CDW package, the cost now populates over to the charge summary field. We can now add a deposit. If we click on the drop box next to type, it gives us a list of our deposit types. I am going to select cash, and for the amount, I am going to enter the estimated amount of the rental. I would now like to show you the driver screen. With Rentworks version 4, both primary and additional drivers are added on this single screen. However, you can only have one primary driver. We have also split this out so that a company can be the renter, that is, responsible for payment. By looking at the browser above, you see that the renter we entered is both the renter and the driver. To add an additional driver, we are going to add a new record. It adds a new line in the browser box. I am going to add the last name field and select the name of Joan Miller. Click on the Save button. The name now appears in the browser window as the additional driver. Right is where you would add the frequent flyer information. Below that are fields that you can add personal identification information. You can also go further down the page and add local and insurance information. 
We are now going to go to the charges slash payment screen. In RentWorks version 4, all the charges and payments are on this one page. To add a miscellaneous charge, I am going to add a new record. I am going to select charge as the item, miscellaneous charge as the type, and baby seat as the code. As you can see below, the baby seat price now appears under the detail info. Once we click on the Save button, the cost of the baby seat will now populate over to the Charge Summary field. If you are doing an insurance rental, you can click on the Extensions tab and enter any information that you have there. Let's go ahead and update this record by clicking on Finish. We now click Yes in the Do You Wish to Print box. Now I'm going to select the form to print, and then we can select the output destination, which includes sending an email. We have now successfully opened a contract. In order to close out a contract, we are going to click on Check-in. You can search for open contracts by several search criteria. We are going to search by renter name, after highlighting the name, we can either click on the Edit button in the upper left or simply double click on the name. This will take us to the summary page, which is the same as the one while opening the contract. We are going to go to the Charges slash Payment screen. We will first enter the mileage in, then tab through the Fuel Out and Fuel In gauges. All of the charges then calculate automatically. At the top of the screen, we have the summary browser, and down below, we have the detail browser. Right now, under the summary browser, we have the rate line highlighted, and it gives us the total amount for time and mileage. If you look below at the detail browser, it has regular daily highlighted, and it gives us the rate per day and the number of days charged. If you click on Charge, see how the detail information has changed. It shows us the number of days charged, the rate, and the total amount. All miscellaneous charges are consolidated with rates as well as payments to make it easier for you to look at all charges and edit any records you want. We are going to create a payment record. I am going to select Payment as the item, Cash as the type, and Cash as the code. As you can see, the total amount due has now populated down below. We are going to click on the Save button. When we scroll down on the Charge Summary Browser, we now have a zero balance due. We can click on the Finish icon, and we can now have the option as to whether we want to print out the contract. If we choose Yes, we can pick the form we want to use along with the output destination. We have now successfully closed out a contract. Any contract modifications can be done by clicking on Contract Modify. The Modify function allows you to look at all contracts for just open, pending, closed, or voided. It also gives you the option to search by renter's RA number, renter's name, unit number, or by company. If a customer wants to extend their contract, select Open, Renter Name, and type in a few letters of their last name. Click on Search. Highlight the name and double click on it. Go to the Date Due field and simply change it to the new return date. If you would like to add an additional deposit, click on the Charges Payments tab. 
to create a new payment record, I am going to click on New. I am going to select Payment as the item, Cash as the type, and Cash as the code. In the Amount field, just below Detail, we are going to enter the new deposit amount. As you can see, once we click on the Save button, the amount automatically populates in the summary browser and also in the charge summary field to the right. We can now click on finish and we have successfully modified an open contract. If you would like to add an additional charge to a closed contract, such as a parking ticket or for damages, select Closed, Renter Name, and type in a few letters of their last name. And click on Search. Click on the Charges slash Payment screen to add a new charge. Click on New to add a record. I am going to select Charges as the item, Miscellaneous Charge as the type, and damage as the code. Just below detail, we are going to enter in the amount of damage. Again, once you click on Save, the damage amount appears in the Summary Browser and also in the Charge Summary field to the right. Now we now have a balance due of 4-2016. We now need to create a new payment record. I am going to select Payment as the item, Cash as the type, and Cash as the code. In the Amount field just below Detail, it now shows the amount due, which is for 2016. Click on the Save button and the amount automatically populates in the Summary Browser and also in the Charge Summary field to the right. Once our contract shows a balance due of zero, we can click on Finish to complete the process. Note that both the charge and corresponding payment can have a report date different from the close date. This will allow you to balance your DBR. We have now successfully modified a closed contract. Hi, my name is Phil Jones, and I'm going to be taking you through the Renters Customers option next. As you can see from the screen here, each renter record is maintained within the system, including the last name, first name, address, city, state, and zip, plus email, date of birth, even passport or frequent flyer information can be maintained. In addition, we can keep the employer preferences as well, showing the company name, the employer, the address, city, state, zip. Also, preferences can be stored for each renter. The system maintains when their last rental was, how many rentals they have had, the source of business code, the referral, and the agent ID. Even preferred coverages can be kept within the renter record. The benefit of this, of course, is the next time the renter calls for a car, we can look up their record and all this information is defaulted into the reservation or into the contract, saving time at the counter and sending the renter on his way quickly. The renter customer file also has interfaces to dealership systems by Reynolds and & Reynolds and ADP, where information of customers can be shared between the two systems automatically. Next, we are going to the fleet file. The fleet file is where the inventory is stored within the system. As you can see from the fleet file, when we bring it up, there are three tabs, general information, service information, and finance information. 
On the general information screen, we put in the unit number and VIN number of the vehicle. The current status of the vehicle is maintained here by transactions that flow through the system. The current location of the vehicle and the odometer are also kept along with its current fuel level. Vehicle information includes the year, make, and model, the type of fuel that the vehicle uses, and information about the color, description, and engine in the vehicle. You can also keep an image of the vehicle on the system that can be viewed at any time. For that, we have the license information for the vehicle, what the license plate is, the state it was licensed in, any vehicle licensing fee, the expiration date of the license. Key codes are accounted for, and next to that you see the due back information which is maintained by the system. As a vehicle is rented, the current status of the vehicle is changed from available to on rent, and the due back information is populated by the system. Users can define various options for vehicles, and these can be applied to each vehicle depending on how they are ordered. The last movement, date, and time fields at the bottom here keep track of when this vehicle last moved and is updated in the transaction history. Looking at the service screen, we can maintain a purchase order number and the invoice date for the vehicle, plus the acquisition price and any taxes, and the warranty term. The owning location of the vehicle is maintained as well, plus the delivery location, delivery date. The in-service date is when the system is used to help the system calculate availability. Down at the bottom of this particular screen, we have disposal information where grounding miles and date can be kept, plus for program vehicles, what the minimum keep and date parameters are and the maximum keep and date parameters. The system uses these to figure out when vehicles will be leaving the fleet. This calculation is used within the availability. The actual out-of-fleet information is maintained by the system when a vehicle is sold from the system. On the finance page of the fleet, we have the invoice amount of the vehicle. We have any expenses for the vehicle being delivered to the location. Then we have the bank ID, the loan number, the amount financed, the term of the financing, the principal amount, the interest rate, interest start date, and payment information. Below, we have the depreciation information. This includes first and last month depreciation for partial month depreciation. And there are three methods that we can use to depreciate. We can either use a monthly depreciation amount, a monthly depreciation percentage, or a daily depreciation rate. The system allows for all three. There is a start date for the depreciation and the system maintains the last date that depreciation was calculated through. The current odometer, the starting date for license depreciation, and the accumulated license depreciation is all maintained within the system. The depreciation amounts get updated via the depreciation report, which can post to accounting systems that are attached to the system. RentWorks has 20 inquiries which are on-screen lookups. They are categorized by equipment inquiries, fleet inquiries, and general inquiries. Let's take a look at the fleet inquiry by status. Simply enter your criteria, then click on Search. You can click on the column Headings to sort by that item. You can highlight the item of interest and double click, or simply go to the icons in the upper left to take you to more information on that particular inquiry. Let's also look at the contract and reservation audit inquiry. I can search by contract number, reservation number, or employee number. By double clicking, it will show me more information on that item. There are over 100 reports within RentWorks grouped into several categories. 
items such as fleet and management have subcategories. Let's take a look at the revenue management report under our revenue subcategory. All reports will allow you to select the location reporting structure as defined on the left. Most reports will also allow you to enter in a starting and ending range. You can either type in the date or use the pull-down calendar. With the Revenue Management Report, I can select to sort by a local company, a renter, a rate code, inventory class, or unit number. The real power of this particular report is the ability to choose the columns to print on the report. All of your miscellaneous charges appear in the left portion of the screen. And to simply put them on the screen, you click Add. I can even move them up in the order. Your report can be sent to an Excel spreadsheet, a disk file. It can be immediately emailed. It can be sent to a PDF file, a printer, or the screen by selecting Terminal. Reports can be scheduled to run at a later time as well by simply clicking in the upper left. You can specify a date and time to run the report. 